Hi everyone! This is going to be the final Glyphs demo, and today we're going to talk about kerning. So kerning is something that you do when your design is done. Um, like everything is done except for maybe overtime features and kerning. Um, the reason that you want to do kerning at the very end is because kerning is a very labor, one, it's a very labor intensive process, and two, um, it can only really be done in, when every design decision has already been made. Like you're never going to change the design of your um, like K leg or like your quotes or whatever have you. Um, and you'll get to see why in a, in a second. And I'm going to teach you how to kern from the ground up. Now there are some more like algorithmic ways to do kerning. Um, obviously like kerning being a very labor intensive process, there has been a lot of uh, attempts to make it a little bit more streamlined and easy for a lot of people. Um, so here we have the glyphs uh, kerning tutorial um, that is that looks like it's been um, getting keep you know um, getting kept kept up today. It's also available in Chinese and French for those of you that speak those languages. Um, and you can see that like there is a really good detailed documentation of how to do this. And what I want to point out is that like there are certain features that like if you already have um, kerning done in one font and want to have the same groups in another font, uh, you can import kerning. Um, there's also like an option to uh, sort of like use scripts. So like <laughs> there's another uh, funny one in particular where uh, it steals kerning values from InDesign's optical kerning and inserts them into your font. Um, now I don't recommend that you do this, but it's kind of like nice to know that like these sort of options do exist. What I, the one thing that I do recommend um, is that like there, there are scripts that applies for um, syncing and splitting kerning between like different, uh, different scripts like Latin, Cyrillic, and Greek uh, and renaming kerning groups. So these are like the more advanced options. But if you, if you ever do get to this point, um, it's nice to know that these things do exist. And that being said, I'm going to cover kerning from the ground up. So here is... Um, uh, where I'm just going to have like a brief explanation of what kerning is. So we know that like we've done spacing so far. Um, and another thing is like spacing is not kerning, um, just in case you need a refresher. So spacing is like uh, almost like a, um, thinking about letters as a physical object where like there is a space. So here we see that the space for the A is zero on the left and one on the right. And it's always going to be that value no matter what letter is coming before or after it. Um, and this goes for the O. So like the O is 61, 61 um, on the left and the right. And then no matter if it's an, a B or a V or a W or whatever, like it's always going to say that value because this is, um, this is the default value, right? Um, for this. Uh, okay, so that being said, we need to break those um, conventions sometimes because we need, we have letters like the A and the V where there is a lot of space or like the A and the W. Um, like a, another big one is like Y and like an O, for instance. So if you think about like, um, I don't know, yo-yo or like YOLO, uh, you'll see that there is a lot of space between the Y and the O and the Y and the O right here that you can see. Um, and these things are exceptions because, again, like if you have like the H, um, it looks fine. If you have like the A, you can't really get it. Well, maybe, maybe you can get a little bit closer, but not really. Um, like the D looks fine. But like if you think about like, uh, again, like the Y, it's really, really far. Um, so these are the exceptions that are solved with kerning. And the way that you can see kerning here is in this window. So if you go to window, kerning, uh, there's this window that pops up that has all the kerning values. It doesn't have anything yet. Um, I will leave that there for the time being. Um, the first thing that you need to do really is uh, assigning kerning groups. And kerning groups mean that like you're grouping letters um, that have the same shape. Uh, we'll go over it like right here. So we'll see here that like the O, we definitely want to have it in... Sorry, I'm just going to uh, resize this so you can see this a little bit better. Um, yeah, so here's like the O. Here's the O. Uh, I have it selected and then I'm going in right here um, in the kerning group. And so like I'm going to name it like left side. Let's do like 
Um, I'm just going to do uppercase O. And then uppercase O. Uh, just make sure you're always naming this the same thing. Um, you can name it like you oh you see underneath O um, if you want to. This is just a name that you give it. Um, but it's just kind of easy to just name it like um, the letter shape. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and then like here we can see like okay the Q is basically the same shape. I'm going to have it O and O. Um, and then the D is the O on the right side. So I'm going to have it on the right. Um, and then the C is like the O on the left side. So I'm going to have it there. And then the G is the same thing. Now, like, just make sure you're not blindly doing this because maybe you have um, a unique looking shape where, um, I don't know, maybe like you have a unique looking shape where uh, the G doesn't look like an O on the left side, um, then you should not do it. Maybe you should make a new G group, for instance. Uh, and then like, let's go through the H. Um, I'm going to have the left group kerning group H, right kerning group H. Um, also just know that the right and left group is not the same thing. So um, we'll, we'll see that in a little bit. Okay, so the uh, you can also select multiple glyphs. So for the E, uh, B, E, and F, I'm going to select them at the same time. Uh, and then I'm going to come here and like do left kerning group H. Um, and there we go. So we have the, the B, the E, the F, you can see the value is always like the H. Um, the I doesn't really look like anything, right? So I'm going to leave that there. Maybe I, I do like to put all of them in groups at the very least. So I'll just put them in its own little group. Um, the K, the L, I'm going to select all of these. Um, uh, P, R, they all have the H. Uh, stem on the left side. Uh, the K is its own shape. The L is its own shape. Um, M and the N look like the H on the right side, so I'm going to do that. Um, the S, I'm just going to have the S in a separate group. The J is a tricky one. So like there are kerning exceptions that you can set as well. Um, so maybe I'll do the, the H on the right side because it has a very similar looking thing and just do a J on the, um, on the left side. And the T, I'll put it into its own little group. And then the U, uh, maybe, maybe I'll have this in its own little group as well. Sometimes depending on the design, the J and the U might share some aspects. So just um, keep that in mind. The V, I'll have, um, the V and the W are sometimes the same or sometimes they're different because of the angle differences. Sometimes the W, if it's a narrower design, it's a little bit, um, the angles are a little bit higher. Uh, so this time I'm going to name it like like that. The X is its own thing. Um, the Y is its own thing. Um, and the Z is, is its own thing. Now keep in mind, like if you have like, like an O tilde, for instance, like the O grava, the O acute, like they'll all go underneath the O bracket. Um, and then like, so you, you go on and do the same thing for um, potentially the punctuations and the numbers as well. Um, so I've only done the uppercase, but you do the same thing for the lowercase as well. Um, so you would go through and be like, okay, like it's um, it's an N on the left side and the uh, right side. And then the O is like an O and an O, right? And then like the M uh, would have the same groups as the N. And then the H would have the same group as the N on the right side, but maybe the H is its own thing on the left. Now the L is just like a bar here. So maybe the L is the same on the H on the left, but it's its own little thing on the right because nothing so far looks like an L on the right side. Um, and then the C, the E, the Q um, have an O shape on the left. Um, and you know, you just kind of go through. Maybe it looks like an N on the right side. You can change this later on too. So that it's an O on the left, an H on the right. Ah, oh, sorry. I, sometimes I flip those um, to O on the left, D on the, uh, that looks like an L on the right side, so I'll do that as well. Um, it's an F and an F. Uh, it's, so that's not technically um, an O shape, so I'll just do this. Uh, maybe I want to keep this the same thing as the N on the left side, and I'll make exceptions in case something stabs over um, the X height. Um, what does that look like? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just have that as an I. So like this is like where like uh, some people name it like stem. So instead of an N, you could have named it stem and then be stem left, stem right. Um, 
I'll just make it something like this now. Sorry, an N. Um, J is kind of its own thing. K is like an H on the left side. K on the right. P is like maybe an M, N, and an O. This is definitely an N on the right, uh, on the left side. S is like its own thing. T now, um, that's kind of its own thing too. So maybe I'll put it in its own group. U, U is kind of its own thing too. Was there anything that looks similar on the right side? Maybe not. Um, maybe I'll group the V and the W at the same time. Maybe I'll do like V. They're all both V's. Um, X is like its own thing. Y is maybe its own thing. Some of you might have V's that look like Y's, so that could also be a thing. Um, some people also put punctuations such as the comma um, and the colon and semicolon in the same um, group as well. Like sometimes like it'll be period and it'll be period. Um, and I won't go through the rest, but you sort of like get where I'm going. Now, the next thing you want to do is select every, uh, oh, next thing you want to do is just make sure that you have everything in the correct kerning groups. So, uh, what you might want to do is go into the plugin manager, um, and just go into like, just, uh, look up kerning. And then a great thing is show kerning groups right here from mark to mark. Um, just install that. Show kerning groups. I might have to restart glyphs. Um, I'll restart glyphs. Okay, so I should have, uh, I should have show kerning groups. Uh, script. Uh, where did it go? Uh, I think it was a mark to mark one, right? Sorry, let me just kind of plug in manager kerning. Uh, show kerning groups. View show kerning groups. That's where it is. Okay, cool. Um, view show kerning groups. Here we go. Show kerning groups. So we do that. Is anything happening? Uh, weird. Okay, let me let me actually do this. It is not happening. Why is it not happening? Mm. Oh. Sorry, show group members. Let's see. Show group members. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry about that. So it looks like, um, what this does is that like it sort of like gives you a little bit of like this like ghost image almost of all the letters that is um, there. What I do recommend though is like this script called um, display all kerning group members. Um, th the first one works fine too. Um, I just I just happen to really like this one. Um, so, okay, so, or you can just type this out too, just, it would just take a little bit of manual work. Um, so this is a script that I like where it shows, um, all the left side kerning groups. So like, just double check the B, the E, the F, um, oh, here, here we go. Do you see this little, like, um, thing where, like, it, like, shows you, like, a little mini preview of, like, what, um, all the letters look like on the, um, in this kerning group. So here is like, see this little H? 
where it shows you this is in the kernel group H. So this is where it shows you, um, okay, so these are all the other letters that are in the same kernel group. So this is the E has this, um, and then like, so you'll notice if you go to the C, it might show like the round ones over here. Oh, okay. So I just got alarmed because oh, there's, a, there's a straight over here, but actually this is, oh, there is a straight over here. And that is, that does not sound right. Uh, maybe this is only showing, huh, that is weird and that does not look right. So we go investigate. Maybe, maybe it did mess up something here. Um, so that kind of looked like a D. So I'm going to type in a D here. Um, and it looks like it's in the kerning group on the right side. So maybe that's okay. Um, anyway. So here we go. So the left side kerning groups, uh, B, E, F, H, H, K, uh, L, M, N, P, R, you'll see is all over here. And then C, G, O, Q, um, they all look pretty right. So I is alone, J is alone, S is, S is alone, and these are all alone, okay. And then we have the lowercase, the B, H, K, and L all look pretty self-explanatory, uh, where all the straights are on the left side. And the C, D, E, O, Q is all on the, um, on the left side where you see everything is uh, round, right? Like we see like I and P, R, they look pretty good. And so like this way you just like double check that everything is in a group where it should be. So this is the right side kerning group, uh, D, O, Q, that looks about right. The, the, yeah, so like, so we just go through and just like make sure that I didn't accidentally put in a D or something. Um, you know, like a random looking shape. And so once everything looks good, um, we go to uh, kerning. <laughs> um, and now you're like, okay, like Lynn, how do I, how do I do that? Uh, the text is actually pretty important. And so on my website, where I'm sure you are all now familiar with, in the typeface design um, links, uh, all the way down, the, I have resources for spacing and kerning. And so like here is another great thing where um, uh, the kerning pairs is also a good one. Uh, the kern king is actually the classic. So if you go to kern king, um, there is all this text. And there's a little bit of um, talk about like, you know, like copy this text from this page, paste it into the font software of your choice, look at it, the words in lowercase, then in all caps and see how they set, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's, that's what you do. So uh, let's, uh, let's do, let's do the lowercase. So like, we'll, um, we'll copy all of this. I'll do the lowercase first, command C, go back to glyphs. Um, and then I will copy all of this text in. And so here I'll just go through and be like, okay, what is a point where this, uh, something looks like it should be current, for instance. And I'm just like reading through this list um, and there should be something that like jumps out at you. Uh, for example, this R and the E looks like it could be a little bit closer, right? Um, I'm just gonna go back and copy the uppercase because often the uppercase is where you really see things jump out. Um, so I'll just copy the first half uh, command T to make a new window. Um, and I'm just going to turn off this kerning groups over here because I had that um, checked. Okay, so cool. So here we have um, the uppercase. And in the first line, we can already see that like links over here, L and the Y is probably too far. Uh, and the first thing you want to do before you do anything is if you see here, see this little button over here? Um, if you click it, it turns on and off. This is looking at everything without kerning. This is looking at it uh, while spacing is locked. Um, and I kind of don't know what that is, but uh, what I do recommend, maybe you can just space, but what I do want you to do is lock it. Um, this, is, this is because the uh, way to control spacing left and right in glyphs is shift control arrow, right? Like, uh, let me just actually turn um, this lock off for a second. Uh, and you'll see uh, here, let me just like zoom in so it's more obvious. Let's zoom in. 
Um, so you'll see here that right now, like the spacing value for this is zero and zero, right? This, these are the spacing values. So if I press shift, control, arrow, left and right, do you see how the spacing is changing here? Um, this is spacing, this is not kerning. Um, so if you see, if you, I'll type in another Y over here, you'll see that um, if I change the spacing, this Y on the right side is also changing. This is something that we do not want because we only want to change the kerning value between the L and the Y, not the global value of the Y. Um, so you'll notice that if you lock it and try to do the same thing, um, it won't let you do it. Uh, so the way you kern is shift control option arrow. Shift control option arrow. Um, now you don't need to click shift. Um, you can just do control option, but you will just see that like, um, you'll see here, uh, sorry, sometimes I just have a hard time zooming in and scrolling out of things. Um, is that like you, if you see here, this value, if you just like control, um, here, if you just like control option it, you'll, you'll move in increments of one. If you press shift, you'll move in increments, um, of 10. Right. So, um, so that's the difference, but yes, just make sure you have this locked over here. So you're not messing up with your spacing as you're kerning. Cause it's really, really easy to just like not press that, um, option button. And then like now your spacing is all screwed. Yeah. So you just go through this entire list. Um, so it's locked. So I'm going to go through, um, and be like, okay, like doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, this L and the Y I, um, I'm pressing shift control option and then left arrow key to decrease it and then to increase it the right arrow key now you can also control um the kerning value on the right side by doing shift option command so if you see here shift option command um its value is moving on the right side uh, so you're gonna get used to it as you do this so like you'll you know i'll just go through here maybe i'll get that's close maybe the t and the u should that be closer i'm not i don't know you can leave it, um, the R and the O should maybe be closer, so I'll change that. And then like, oh, the P and the H maybe should be closer, maybe it shouldn't be, um, you know. <laughs> so you just kind of go through and, oh, the B and the Y should be closer. So you kind of go through and do this. And then you can see if you go in window, kerning, you can see that these values have been changing in our kerning window. Um, so here's how you can also just delete it. If you like select it and then like just like delete it, you can also just like delete it. Um, that's kind of like the basics for now. Uh, so after you kern it um, in this context, then you just like keep on going through this list. Um, you keep on going through these like words and then you kern numbers and then you kern uh, percent signs. So like this is like uh, the very minimum amount of kerning that you want to do. Eventually what you do want to have is, um, maybe, maybe it's in here. Uh, see here, know when to stop. Um, yeah. So like here are a bunch of kerning texts that you can do. Um, yeah. I mean, like if you want to like, kern forever <laughs> uh, there there is a bunch of text here for you uh but the thing with kerning is is that like you know once you get once you get started and if you don't stop somewhere like we'll never see you ever again um and you'll see here like what the most frequently occurring kerning pairs are so here like um you can see all these like uh common kerning pairs right um relevant kerning pairs right so like you know <laughs> so so this is just like the gist of it for you and what you eventually do want to get around to doing um is like just making a list that's like a permutation list like a b a c a d a um e a f a g you know blah 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 blah, blah all the way to the z so you can just double check that all letters look good amongst each other you can just totally like already assume that this is going to be pretty, um, a pretty long process if you do it for like every single letter combination, right? Like you can't possibly be, um, kerning every, uh, 
punctuation to punctuation, right? Like, I mean, like maybe then we would never hear from you. Um, but yeah, but as a minimum, um, again, uh, just go through the kerning, uh, kern king, kern king one, um, and do as a minimum just this list. Like, this will not take you that long compared to all the possible, um, uh, kerning things that you could do. So that's it. Um, after that, like, you just make sure that, um, I'm just going to command I, just like make sure that you have all your um, font info set, your master info set, um, instances, features, like these are all these other things um, that you could be doing. But like, <laughs> um, you just like need to like know when to stop because sometimes like there just is no end. And I don't know. I feel that we're uh, being that this is the last um, software demo ever, but there is a lot more to learn, um, honestly. So if you ever feel like you want to learn more about like uh, contextual alternates and stuff, like just always go in here. Um, it's really great. Like context, uh, open type features maybe. So like go into open type features and there's like a four part um, of like what, uh, how to substitute like ligatures um, that I've already demoed once, but in case you want to do this again, um, you can also do this automatically. Um, you can do advanced um, contextual alternates just like this, where like you can have multiple different um, looking letters that are just like cycling through. Oh, look at this. <laughs> you can just have like the six different A's that are just slightly different maybe. Yeah, so there's really like an abundance of things that you can do. Um, and so like even after this class, if you ever have any um, questions about like what you should be doing, um, how you can solve, solve a certain problem, like never hesitate to let me know. Cool. Good luck. See you next week.